Hello and welcome to the second episode of On Base. I'm Ethan Brander. And I'm Lucy Friedel. And today we're going to talk about the biggest offseason moves made by the AL and NL Central. Now Lucy, we both have teams in this division, in these divisions. What can you tell me about the AL Central this season? Well, Ethan, this pains me to say as a Minnesota Twins fan, but I have the Chicago White Sox taking the top spot for the second year in a row despite not making many moves this past offseason. However, that doesn't mean that they didn't sign any new players to their roster. They signed free agent pitcher Kendall Graveman as well as Lurie Garcia to a three-year contract. Another big advantage for the White Sox is that shortstop Tim Anderson was reinstated from league suspension, giving the White Sox the boost they need. Right now, I have them projected with a final record of 85-77. and 77. Yeah, Lucy, I agree with you. As much as it pains me to say this as a Cubs fan, I think the Southsiders are going to take the division this season. They are absolutely loaded in all aspects, and I just don't see very many teams in the AL Central being able to compete with them this season. Well, don't count out my twins just yet. Now, this isn't any bias, but I was actually really impressed with their offseason signings this year. The twins have struggled in the past to sign players at positions that they need a boost in, most notably in pitching. While the Twins did sign some pitchers in Chris Archer and Sonny Gray, the biggest signees to come to Minnesota are Carlos Correa, Gio Urshela, and Gary Sanchez. These three players all have the ability to give the Twins a much-needed boost towards a winning record. The race for the division title, in my opinion, will be a close one as I have the Twins with a final record of 82 and 80. Now, you said this is going to be a close race for the division. Where do you see the rest of the teams? Yeah, so the rest of the teams, I see them as starting to rebuild for the future. As of right now, I have the Detroit Tigers and the newly renamed Cleveland Guardians, both with a record of 78 and 84. Detroit has a very talented farm system that could have the potential to win a World Series. However, we won't see that team until at least 2023. But Detroit fans can look forward to the debuts of Spencer Torkelson and Riley Green. As for Cleveland, they have a strong pitching staff that can help them win some games. They have Jose Ramirez, who is a strong MVP candidate. However, in my opinion, there is not enough talent to go around to help them secure that division title. Finally, at the bottom are the Kansas City Royals. Ever since the team won the World Series in 2015, they've seemed to go downhill. Now, I'm all for supporting an underdog, but I don't think 2022 will be the year for the Royals. So, Ethan, what are your predictions for the other teams in the Midwest? So, for the NL Central, I have a really hard time choosing a winner. It should be a two-team race this season between St. Louis and Milwaukee, but I have Milwaukee barely taking the top spot when they go 90-73. and But I think this record will be inflated by their division, being that the Pirates, Reds, and Cubs are all rebuilding this season and are not expected to be competitive. The most notable addition that the Brewers made to their roster was bringing in 35-year-old former MVP Andrew McCutcheon. McCutcheon has fallen off in the past couple seasons, but is still a quality starter. The Brewers lineup is good enough to win this division, and I believe they are a very good, they have a very good pitching rotation and a solid batting lineup highlighted by Christian Yelich. Yeah, Ethan, I have to agree with you. As much as it pains me, the big rivalry of Minnesota and Wisconsin, it still crosses across divisions. Now, where do you have the rest of the division? Next, I have the St. Louis Cardinals finishing 88 and 74. The Cardinals have a middle-of-the-road pitching rotation, but their top prospect, Matthew Libertore, should join the majors roster at some point this season and could be a big factor. The bats are pretty solid, too. Overall, I think this team is above average, but I don't see it as one that is absolutely amazing. Following the Cardinals, I have my Chicago Cubs. I know this might be painful, but how are they going to do this season? Dude, not good. Every time I see this team, I feel like I'm looking at a new set of players I've never heard of before. It seems like everyone that was on our 40-man World, World Series winning roster, only three guys remaining, Kyle Hendricks, Wilson Contreras, and Jay Hay. This team pushed the reset button at the end of the trade deadline last season and are in full rebuild mode. If it wasn't for the Pirates and Reds being as bad as they are, I would not expect this team to be anywhere near the 77 wins I projected for them. Moving on to fourth place in the division, I have the Cincinnati Reds. The Reds' pitching lineup is slightly below average, but they do have a pretty decent duo of Luis Castillo and Tyler Molly. But the Reds' batting lineup is one of the worst in baseball. There is just no one on this team who makes me excited. Votto is getting old and is no longer the power rating threat that he used to be. I see this team losing more games than they win when they finish 74-88. and 88. Now at the bottom of the division, I have the lowly Pittsburgh Pirates. The Pirates are, to say it nicely, bad. And I don't think there's really anything that's very exciting for their fan base this season. The one positive I could find is that this team has their top prospect, O'Neill Cruz, who should join the majors at some point this season and give their fan base that much needed boost. I have the Pirates going 62-100. and 100. Some advice from a Twins fan who suffered heartbreak in 2016, there's always next season to look forward to. I've been saying that as a Cubs fan my entire life. 
Thank you for tuning in to On Base. Tune in next week for an update on the MLB's East Coast Divisions. From DITV Sports, I'm Lucy Friedel. And I'm Ethan Brander. Have a great rest of your day.